Hi, I'm Sean. I'm a HR Maths student and I'm studying Maths in college. And I'm here to help you get through your Leave Insert Maths questions. So let's get into it. Okay, so here's our question. We're told that an experiment measures the fuel consumption at a various speeds for a particular model of car and that this information is given in table one. So as we can see, as the speed increases, the amount of kilometers we get out of each liter of fuel uh, decreases. So the way to interpret this is basically uh, the faster you travel, the more liters you're gonna need uh, to complete your journey. And part A asks us to find the correlation coefficient of the data in table one correct at three decimal places. Okay, so to find the correlation coefficient, uh, you're gonna have to get out your calculator and you wanna put it in the statistics mode. So to do that, you're just gonna go shift uh, sorry, just press setup actually, or menu, and then press two for stats. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna press uh, two here for a plus bx. And this basically means that we're looking for a straight line and the correlation, co the correlation coefficient of that line, sorry. So we're gonna press two, and then it's gonna bring up this table. And this is the table we're gonna type in our x and y values to. So our x values are just gonna be the speeds and kilometers per hour. So 40, 48, 56, as you can see in table one. And our fuel consumption is going to be just the other values uh, below those. So 21, 16, 18, and so on. Okay, so now we've typed in all our values into our table, as you can see here. And what we're going to do now is I uh, just press the AC button, which is this orange button here. And now you're going to see it's, go it's going to go blank, but don't worry about that. Uh, it's just gone like basically into memory. So... The next thing to do is going to be to press shift and one for, to get the statistics up again, the options. And now you're going to press five, the reg button. And we're looking for R, which is the, co the correlation coefficient. And there are some other options here, which you might have to use on different occasions. Uh, really, there's only a few you're, you're ever going to have to use. And the correlation coefficient is definitely the um, most common one. So we're going to press R for three. And our value is going to be minus 0 0.9565, which correct to three decimal places is 0 0.957. So you can follow the steps of that process uh, for any correlation coefficient. There are some you're going to have to use at uh, the frequency as well, but you can look that up on the internet. It's not too hard to change that as well, uh, to put it on your table and incorporate that. But uh, definitely make sure you understand how to do that for the exam because it's really the only option. You know, you can't really do this by hand very easily at all. So that's our answer. So this correlation coefficient uh, basically describes uh, the relationship between the speed and the fuel consumption. And as we can see, it's a very inversely proportional relationship, whereby when the speed increases, the fuel consumption decreases pretty much linearly. And a perfect inverse correlation would be minus one. So we're very close to that. So for part B, we're asked to find the graph, basically. We've got to plot the points and draw the line of best fit uh, by eye, so it doesn't have to be perfect. And uh, this is pretty much, you know, easy enough. First of all, we're gonna plot the points, which is really straightforward. So here are the points once they're plotted. And now to draw the line of best fit, all we're gonna do is uh, draw a line basically through the middle of the points the best we can. And by that, I mean just try and make sure the line is above the lowest points and below the highest points and sort of just in the middle like that. So there's our line of best fit. And um, that's kind of what it looks like in the American scheme. As long as you're drawing a line that kind of looks like this, I'd say it'd be grand. They're not going to be too uh, strict on this because it is by eye they're asking you to do this and it's not precise. In part two, they tell us that the slope of this line is minus 0 0.15. And we're asked what this value uh, represents in the context of the data. So what they're looking for here is you to just say in words, basically why the slope being minus 0 0.15 is important or sort of what it means. So we're gonna just write this in terms of what happens for each kilometer per hour. So as the speed increases by one kilometer per hour, or as we take one increment across in the X direction, we can say that the fuel consumption decreases by 0 0.15 kilometers per liter. And that's sort of why the slope is minus 0 0.15. So I've just written fuel consumption on average decreases by 0 0.15 kilometers per liter. 
And I think what they're basically looking for in your worded explanation here is some reference to the fact that the slope is minus 0 0.15, which we have uh, because we've included these two numbers. And also probably some reference to the fact that this is on average, so it doesn't happen exactly the same way uh, for every kilometer we travel, but that is the average trend, as well as obviously the, the right uh, references of speed and fuel consumption. So if you've got all that, uh, you're going to be getting five marks. So part D tells us that Mary drove from Cork to Dublin at an average speed of 96 kilometers per hour. Jane drove the same journey at an average speed of 112 kilometers per hour. Each traveled 206 kilometers and paid 132.9 cents a per liter for the fuel. Both use the model of car used to generate the table in data one. So we can say that this car applies to what we've been doing so far. And we're asked to find how much longer it took uh, Mary to complete the journey, correct to the nearest minute. So how much they paid for the fuel at this point at least is irrelevant. I'm sure it's going to come up in part two, but all we've got to do is divide the, the distance of the journey, so 260, by their respective speeds and then find the difference. So 260 divided by 96 is the amount of time it took Mary to drive the journey. And 260 over 112 is the, is the uh, time it took for Jane to drive the same journey. Obviously she was going faster, so it's gonna be smaller. And you're gonna find that the difference is about 0 0.3869 hours. Uh, but of course, to convert that into minutes, we're just gonna multiply it by 60, which is gonna be 23.21 minutes and correct to the nearest minute, that's obviously 23 minutes. So that's the difference in time it took between the two of them completing their journeys, and that's gonna be worth five marks. So part two says, based on the, da the data in table one and their average speeds, find how much more uh, Jane spent on fuel during the course of the journey. So we know that uh, Jane decided to drive faster, so she drove at 112 kilometers per hour, whereas Mary chose to drive at 96 kilometers per hour. And we also know that for this model of car, uh, the faster you drive, the more fuel you're going to consume per kilometer traveled. So if we go back up to our table, table one, uh, conveniently they've chosen to drive at the same speeds we're given the fuel consumption for, which are 96 and 112. And we can see that the fuel consumption for 96 kilometers per hour is 11 kilometers per liter. So we're going to be using that. And for 112 kilometers per hour, we have nine kilometers per liter. And we're also told that it costs 132.9 cents uh, per liter for the fuel. So the first thing we're gonna have to do is find an expression for the number of liters they both had to buy uh, to do the journey. So we know for Mary, she drove 260 kilometers and we know that Mary had 11 kilometers for every fuel, uh, for every liter of fuel that she purchased. So we're gonna put that over 11. At times how much we know that a liter of fuel costs which in euros is one euro and 32.9 cents. And for Jane, we've got the same thing, except that she only got nine kilometers out of each liter. So we're gonna put that over nine, but we know the price is the same. So now we have the, the, these uh, two expressions and we're just gonna take uh, the first for Mary away from the second, which was for Jane. And you're gonna find the difference is gonna be around six euros and 98 cents. So that's how much more Jane spent. And for getting that out, you're gonna have uh, five marks. And that's it for this question. Uh, definitely heavy on this, uh, the statistics here and testing your understanding of uh, things like the correlation coefficient and uh, graphs and how to interpret it all. But um, not too hard a question, I wouldn't say. And I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, uh, there's going to be other similar resources and videos in the description. And I'll see you next time.